church, how are you doing this morning? Are you good? We have a new song for you this morning. Is that okay? Are you ready? All right, this song is called Honey in the Rock. We're going to put the chorus on the bridge. And this is what it says. It says, there's honey in the rock, water in the stone, manna on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know everything I need you've got. There's honey in the rock. And this, this, this song is taken from a verse in Psalms 81, 16. And it talks about how God gives us manna, which is bread. And it talks about how God gives us water to quench our thirst. But, you know, I don't know what kind of season you're going through right now. I don't know if you're in a valley or you're on a mountain. But I know that everything that you need right now that you're searching for, He's got this morning for you. But not only does He give us manna and does He give us water, but He gives us honey. He gives us sweetness to life, something that we don't necessarily need, but He gives it to us. And it says in this song, how sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus. Can I encourage you this morning to press into that sweetness? God has a life for you that is more than you would ever imagine. It's more abundant than you would think. Amen. So why don't you sing this song with us this morning? It's Honey in the Rock. Amen.
you know, we're going to continue in our worship by taking communion this morning. So why don't you take a seat? We're going to start handing out the communion items. And I'm going to invite Kieran to come up right now, who loves Jesus. We ask again, who loves Jesus? Who loves that new song? We're going to have to hand that at the, the end of the service. We might jump back into that. Does everyone know Kieran? Kieran is, to know Kieran is to know faithfulness. Everyone say faithfulness. Incredible man of God. Thank you, Kieran. Go for it. Thanks, Pastor Andrew. Jesus has or wants a personal relationship with every single one of you. Many years ago, I was thinking about God and the world, and I thought in my naivety that He created a big clock, like a mega mechanism that He set in motion, and He set, sat back and He watched. We would run about and get married and have kids, people would pass away and others be born, the cycle would go on like a big merry-go-round. Boy, was I wrong. Jesus is interested and involved in every aspect of our lives, just like a good friend that you want to share the highs and lows, the victories and the failures with. Talking about victories and failures, the Apostle Peter went through so much with Jesus. Peter recognized that Jesus was the Son of God, and even to the point where he stepped out of the boat and he was walking on water. I mean, that's pretty amazing faith right there. Jesus also said to Peter, get behind me, Satan because Peter wanted to prevent Christ from going to the cross. And, he, and Peter also denied Jesus three times. However, after Jesus had risen, he asked Peter, do you love me? Then feed my sheep. And he also asked this of Peter three times. Jesus, in his patience, friendship and forgiveness tasked Peter with overseeing the fledgling Jerusalem church. That's the faithfulness of, of Jesus right there. Christ is our example of how to do relationships. He had a right word at the right time, was supportive and spoke wisdom into each situation. He called out poor behaviour when needed and he showed us all the high road of life in his kingdom and the kingdom of God the Father. We can personally speak with our Lord at any time. He always has an attentive ear to our prayers. I mean, it's so amazing that we can talk to the creator of the universe time. That's the personal relationship that he wants to have with you. In John 15, it says, Jesus said, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You're my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I heard from my Father, I have made known to you. Jesus is a friend to us. I mean, like it's amazing, as it says that all things were created, that God knew us 
before we were born, while we were being knitted together in our mother's womb. He knew us and he knew a destiny and a purpose that he wanted for our lives. As with any good friendship, we respect our friends and consider the things that they have said. Because of the greatness of Christ and his sacrifice for us, we can gladly accept when he says, you're my friends if you do whatever I command you. What is more of a definition of friendship than to sit and eat a meal together, as was the Passover meal or the last supper Jesus had with his friends? Unfortunately, there was a heaviness at the meal as Jesus knew he would um, be betrayed and go to the cross. However, he also said um, that the communion was a remembrance until he came in the kingdom of God and the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. You know, what a great day to, for us to look forward to. In Luke 22, it says, When the hour had come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. Then he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So if everyone wants, just wants to take the emblems and take them now in remembrance of Jesus. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we are grateful for your sacrifice for us. You are concerned for our lives and for our families. We remember you with this communion and look forward to being united with you in the presence of the Father and the Holy Spirit in your kingdom. We pray that we can be good friends and live our lives in faith and trust in you. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Beautiful. Thank you, Kieran. Come on, just for a moment, why don't we stand? Why don't we just take a moment to thank Jesus? Come on, close your eyes in this place, just for a moment. It's what communion communion's all about. Thanking him. We thank you, Jesus. A sacrifice for us. Beautiful. Beautiful. just like communion, one of my greatest aspects of communion is that Jesus gathered his friends around him. He liked community. Amen? So, on that, why don't you go find someone? Greet them, meet them, tell them they are amazing, they're wonderful, they're incredible, so good to see them. If you're new or visiting with us, we'd love to welcome you to our church and give you a little gift. And uh, say hello and invite you afterwards to our connection point. Make you a copy.
who got blown away by the storm last night? Anybody? I know, it must be weird. I love storms. Who loves watching storms roll in? It's amazing. I suppose unless, of course, it affects your house and your livelihood. And, but watching a storm come in is just so good. Some dogs run and hide in a storm. Our Max just sleeps peacefully. I knew he was like Christ. Christ slept in the storm. Amen. Who loves to give? Let me start with, if you're alive in this place, raise your hand. <laughs> Some people didn't put their hands up. If you're alive in this place, raise your hand. Thank you. Romans 14, verse 8, For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. That kind of sums it all up, doesn't it? That's it. There it is. We can all go home. If we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. I've said it many times. I'm not afraid of death. I'm slightly afraid about how I die. But other than that, I'm not afraid of death because right now I live for God and when I die, I live for God. Amen? For me, it's a promotion. We are the Lord's, Romans 14 verse 8 says. So if we take that into perspective when we live here, when it comes to our giving, and obviously not just giving our finance, giving our time, our talent, Well, it's because you're talented. You've got all the talent on stage. There's some talent out there that needs to be on stage. The person next to you can sing and got a really good voice. I want you to raise your hand. The person next to you can sing. Put them down on the list. But there's other talents. that There's talents right up there in our kids' area and youth on Friday nights. But you know what? When it comes to giving, we... we are, we are the Lord's. He gives us everything and He asks in return that we would tithe, give a tenth in honour back to Him. And that's what, why we give. And out of that giving, practically, the work of His house, His church, Christ is the head of this, gets to operate. Amen? So that's how it works. Why don't we just pray around our giving this morning. God, we thank You. We thank you for the security in this life that we are yours. We thank you that we know it, we understand that we live under that revelation that we are owned by you. We thank you for the revelation that when we leave this world, we are yours. We're with you. And we thank you for the security that brings into our lives. And God, we know in your word it says that we are to tie, that we are to give. And God, I pray for every single person in this place, every individual, that you would bless us so that we could bless others by giving of our finances and resources to your kingdom. And everybody said, Amen. A few announcements. Who likes announcements? If you are in kids right now, and kids, you're eating pizza. So bad luck. <laughs> and if you're a kid's leader, I'm pretty sure, if you are serving in the kids' ministry today, I'm pretty sure you're eating pizza. So uh, if you joined the kids' team, you would have had pizza this morning. But the kids are having a great time up there. We have a great kids' ministry, and I encourage you to, uh, you know, if you've got kids, bring them. I can't tell you to go find some kids and bring them because that would be wrong. But kids ministry is amazing. Youth on Friday nights. I heard youth was amazing on Friday nights. And the youth team said, fantastic. And if you're new or busy, we just want to make sure that you're looked after. We're going to 
Uh, in a few weeks' time, we're going to have a, a gathering of those that have been new to our church to talk to you a bit more about what we do as a church, tell you more about that. But after the service, we want to make sure we give you a copy, look after you. You should have got a little pack as you came through the door, and we want to make sure that you are welcomed well. Well, this morning is, we call it Life Group Sunday or Connection Sunday, and uh, and I invited an amazing couple. They've been in our church for many, many, many years. I mean, they look very young, um, so it's very deceiving. Nice save, right? And uh, they're a great couple. I don't know anyone who doesn't like Anne and Jerry. Um, Everyone loves Anne and Jerry. And uh, they're going to take charge of this service, and they're going to talk to us about life groups and share with us about connecting the power of them. And I'm going to invite the boss, Anne. Here she comes. (laughs) Give her a hand as she comes and shares this morning. Good morning. All us over 50s think each other look young because none of us can see properly. Anyway, um, (laughs) on that note, (laughs) so um, this morning, um, I want to talk about screens. Trust me, I'm going somewhere towards life group with this. Um, So who remembers Zoom? Yeah. (laughs) So um, we all know it was really useful for stopping us from becoming completely disconnected. Um, I'm a high school teacher, so it kept the kids somewhat there. Um, The upside was I got to meet all their cats and dogs, which was really nice. (laughs) Um, But when we came back to school, we realised, you know, it just wasn't the same as teaching in person. It wasn't the same as having that um, that social environment around them. And I think all of us would agree that church online kept us alive. It was like, you know, maybe the manna in the desert, um, but we were certainly craving the leeks and garlic and onions <laughs> By the end of it, it was something that, it, that that kept us, you know, hanging in there. But it wasn't like being together. How many know when we came back together, it was it was like an oasis. It was so refreshing to see each other again. So, um, this is kind of an analogy I want to use for living the Christian life um, in semi isolation. So. Many of us, um, you know, we're here, we're in church, um, but are we still kind of behind those screens? I think um, we live a lot of our lives um, kind of like we did on Zoom. So for me as a teacher, you know, I had to be dressed nicely from here up. (laughs) My hair down was trackies and bed socks. Um, And in terms of um, how I presented myself to the students, I was always very upbeat to keep them upbeat. Um, but when that Zoom turned off, I was like, oh, it was, it was just exhausting. So um, we can be like that in many areas of our lives. We can be like that in, um, definitely in a workplace because um, if we were who we really are and if we said and acted how we felt all the time, um, then we'd be in a world of trouble at work. <laughs> so how many know that you have difficult bosses or difficult people at work Um, and (laughs) we can be like that in many situations probably most situations except for our families our poor families get the real (laughs) ass but at church we can be the same so we're here um, but we're not really here sometimes we're just the version of us for Sunday morning so we don't need any more superficiality in our lives so it's everywhere, it's on social media, it's um, everywhere we look. And it, it's kind of tiring to, to be in that kind of environment. So we don't want to be in a place where we always pretend or just put our best foot forward. Sometimes we need the real us. So when we get into these small groups, when we get into life groups, that's where we get to know each other. Um, we begin to let down those screens and we get real with each other. 
Um, so I just want to read Proverbs 27, 17. Does that have? Yep. Got it. Awesome. <laughs> as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. And um, kind of as Kieran was, was talking about, we, when we get together, we let our guard down um, and we really get to know each other and trust each other. And it's across that bridge of trust that we build that we can speak into each other's lives. So we can speak encouragement and words of wisdom. Without that trust, without that, um, that screen being down, without that um, realness with each other, um, that authenticity, we don't have the ability to speak those things because we, we don't know what's going on in somebody's lives, we don't know them personally, and they don't know and trust us. When we get into these small groups, that's where those bridges are built and where those screens come down. Um, when we're in small groups together, we are getting real. Um, for any of those who have been to mine and Jerry's life group in the past, you know, <laughs> it's, it's very real. Like, you walk in, we could be still vacuuming. Um, I could be cooking. <laughs> or we could be arguing about who was vacuuming and who was cooking. And, and often, during <laughs> a life group, when you get to know the real Anne and Jerry, Barbara laughs heartily over here. Um, yep, we're, in, we're definitely a, a very normal couple. We, we do argue and we do <laughs> stab each other our whole family does <laughs> so in that environment in that authenticity you begin to know that the people that you're speaking with and people that are speaking to you um, are real and have the same real struggles as you do so you don't feel embarrassed or ashamed to to speak of the things that are, are troubling you um, we can actually get under those screens and begin to really know each other. Um, the next scripture I wanted to read is Hebrews 10, 24. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Who knows we need spurring on? <laughs> um, especially after the last couple of years. But in general, life can just be exhausting and frustrating and difficult. I mean, we share in each other's joys as well, but we often, I mean, the things we bring to each other that we need prayer about are the things that um, are difficult, you know? And it, it's even just getting to life group sometimes, whether it's whether you're holding the life group and you're, um, you know, cleaning your house and preparing, um, or whether it's you getting home from work and, and quickly grabbing something and going off to um, life group or whether you're going on another day. It's always an effort. Um, but that effort, once you get there, uh, is worth it um, because it's just so easy to get lost in that frustration and um, busyness of life. So we get together and no matter how you come in, I guarantee you're going to come out spurred on because <laughs> we always spur each other on. So at the end of our um, life groups, we usually pray and that often involves bringing in a praise point of something we've prayed about previously. Um, I know for me, specifically, um, towards the end of last year, my, my job was just completely untenable where I was teaching um, and I was praying for a new job. And um, the next day, the ad came up for a job that was perfect and it's a job I've taken and I'm started this year. So it was, <laughs> it was an immediate answer. <laughs> so... Well, in saying perfect, you know, I'm a high school teacher, so as perfect as it can be <laughs> in a boys' school, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so the next scripture I wanted to put up um, was 1 Corinthians 14, 26 from the NIV. So what then shall we say, brothers and sisters? When you come together, each of you has a hymn or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue or an interpretation. Everything must be done so the church may be built up. So each of us brings something unique. We're all different. All the life group leaders are different. All the life groups are different. Um, one of the best things about Bay City is the diversity we have in this place. Um, it's, it's not a place where you have to come and be a cookie-cutter Christian. It's a, it's a place where you come and we celebrate our differences. Um, and we want to be, we want to live in that place where we're learning off each other. Um, we've had many different age groups in our life group, and a lot of them do. 
um, you know, from 13 up to, you know, 50s and 60s, it's, it's wonderful to have all those different perspectives. So we each bring something different to the group, um, our individual experiences, our individual perspective. And on that note, Jerry will now bring his perspective on the importance of spiritual community. Thank you. Beautifully said. Um, thank you very much for that, Anne. That was awesome. Love it. Um, how are we doing this morning, church? Look, um, I just want to take a look at quickly why do life groups? And that's just a little thought. I want everybody to stop and think about for a brief moment just why do we do life groups? Look, I, I found three things because um, life groups have many purposes and they can do a lot of different things. They serve in a lot of purposes. Um, one of the things that we looked at uh, or that I believe it does is it brings learning and understanding. Um, the second thing that I believe that it does is it, do, it helps us to grow in unity. And the third thing is it helps us to help each other, yes. teaches us to help each other. So when I'm looking at this and, and, and understanding the learning of the word and getting understanding about the word of God, um, Ephesians 4 verse 12 says, for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ. So we are the body of Christ, right? And we do need a bit of edifying. We do need a bit of understanding. We need to be able to grow and learn and get some good understanding, some solid base in, in what we're doing and who God is. Um, as Anne says, we do keep it real and we don't believe in, you know, being fake with it. God wants all of you. And that's how we look at you as well. Um, from that same perspective, we want to know that, you know, look, all right, if everything's not okay, it's fine. I was just talking to my brother Craig here, and he was, I said, hey, man, how's it going? And as real as he said, he said, look, I'm doing all right. He says, not great, but it's all right. And I thought, oh. <laughs> you know, and I said, well, for me, I'm just busy. I'm going to have a very busy week, um, a very busy month next month. Um, but in him keeping it real like that, it really helps people to know who you are. You get a good perception, a good understanding of who they are. Just like Christ wants you to have a good perception and a good understanding of who he is. It blesses everyone when that happens. Um, growing in unity. Um, I think it's very hard for anybody to grow in unity with one another when you don't know that person. As Anne was saying, you, you have to know the people. And the more you get around them, you sit down, you break bread with them, you you talk, you chat about your everyday life and various things, your interests, the things that, you know, the things that affect your life, the things that make you happy, the things that make you sad, your do's and don'ts. All of those things help you to grow and knit together in the body of Christ. And I look at all of you guys, and I love you guys to death, and I would do anything for you guys in a heartbeat. I mean, you can ask several people in my life group. They know good and well if they have something going on, and they look at me and it's, uh, I don't want to ask, but I'm like, no, no, ask. What can I do to help you? Because to me, that's an opportunity to help them grow and to get closer to them and to grow in unity with them. Um, and the thirdly, helping each other. Um, actually, no, sorry, unity. Um, Ephesians 4, 2 says, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, so basically, you're getting to know each other. You're learning how to get along with each other. I mean, there's also people that I've, I've, I've met, and I'm kind of like, ooh. <laughs> um, that person has a slightly abrasive personality. And I, I usually like to be that, I'm usually that happy-go-lucky person. I like to have fun. I like to joke around and stuff like that. And yeah, sometimes it gets me in trouble. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes we'll just have a good time. But in thinking of that, you know, that's part of that growing in unity. You know the characters, you know the people that, you, that you're dealing with, you know how they are, you know who they are. And it helps you. It blesses everyone around when that happens. Um, helping each other, um, bearing with one another's burdens. Um, and so fulfill the law of Christ, which is Galatians 6, 2. I cannot tell you guys the amount of times I've turned and I've helped people with various problems 
whether it's a car, whether it's homes, whether it's whatever. Um, I believe that life groups, when we're doing life together, and I was actually trying to avoid saying that, but I can't. It is a factor of matter, uh, a matter of fact. You just, when you're in life groups, you're doing life together. If, if my brother or my sister's hurting, if they have an issue, then that becomes part of my, my issue. We are the body of Christ. If one part is hurting, the rest, if they don't feel it, then they're probably disconnected. Something's not right there. We should all be able to come alongside one another and say, hey, I heard that you, had, you were going through this or you were going through that. What can I do to help you? Because in that, in doing those things, you will, just as Christ says, when you do it to the least of these, you do it to me. When you help that, that person, you're helping me. You're helping me to be solidified as the body of Christ and on earth. And therefore, we then look at the body of Christ, and the body of Christ doesn't look sickly, it doesn't look disjointed or disconnected, but it looks whole. It looks healthy. I mean, it's like, um, how many of you guys have been bitten by a mosquito? Right? You get bit on the arm by a mosquito, and the first thing you do is you smack your arm, right, to try and get that mosquito off of there. Or you start scratching feverishly afterwards. So <laughs> the thing is, think of the body of Christ like that. So something's biting the body of Christ. You reach over and you go, I got to get rid of that, that dog on insect, that thing that's bugging the body of Christ, and you smack it. I'm like, get off the arm. <laughs> and so it's the same kind of understanding. You do things to help the body of Christ. But I always look at life group as family. So if you're in my life group, you'll know that look, there's things that whatever comes across your plate doesn't matter. You're family to me. What do I have to do? I don't know. I don't care. Whatever it is, I'll do it. Let's get the family looked after. Let's make sure that the family stays healthy. Let's look at the body of Christ in a way that they least expect. Um, Josette was having a problem with her car. And it was left up to Central Coast. Me, I'm sitting there going, oh, my gosh, Central Coast. Um, how, do I, how do I help her with this? Well, my nephew is a mechanic. I called my, my nephew and said, hey, dude, I need you to help me out with something. He goes, what's that? I said, um, uh, there's a single mom in my life group in, in my church that her car is broken down, and she needs your help. Can you please go and check it out for me? So my nephew gets in his car, and he goes down, he checks her, her car out, and started working on it. I said, look, anything you need to do that car and get it fixed and working for her, let me know and I'll pay you for it. I'll pay you for your time. I'll pay for whatever you need to do. Just get it done for her, please. That's all I need. And so my nephew goes off and he gets the car running and starts working on it and stuff like that. And he realized there's something else wrong with it, a little bit more challenging than what he expected. And he even went the extra mile and said, look, I'll tow it back, I'll do this, I'll do that. And he did some other things, and it, then at the end of it, um, her engine had actually blown. And so he said, well, look, what I can do for her is I can s um, sell it off and send her the money for it. And so I was just sitting there amazed, I'm just going, wow. I thought I was going above and beyond, but here's my nephew who's willing to go there you know, and it's all just a matter of a phone call or just saying, hey, what can I do to help or get something done or, you know, just doing anything that you can. Um, and look, this it's not a matter of being paid back or anything like that or even boasting or any, anything of that matter. I just want you guys to understand um, what we actually do and what we believe in doing and how our hearts feel about this because it is a passion. Um, is it easy? Not necessarily. Does it cost me something? Yeah, but that's not the point. The point of the matter is, at the end of the day, I want to be able to help. If my brother or my sister's in trouble or they need help with something, I want to be able to help. Because that's what God put me here for. Um, and just looking at um, James chapter 5, verse 16, it says, Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed the effective further prayer of a righteous man avails much. So, with that particular scripture, this is how we actually help. If you're not good at praying, guess how you do, guess how you get good at it? Start praying. And I tell you what, 
nothing makes you pray more than when you see your family member going through something. And as I was just telling Izzy a bit earlier before service, I said, look, if anything makes me worry, it's worth praying about. That's something that urges me to pray. I I will stop everything I'm doing right then and there and pray because it's, it's worth it. Especially if it's family, it's worth it. So if any of you guys, if you're going through something and I know about it, I'm going to be praying for you. There's no two ways about it. It's just my nature. It's something I got to do because I won't feel right until it is prayed about. Um, (laughs) I'm believing God to continue to move and build this church, his church, as he said he would build. Um, And that is all of you guys. And it's not just growing in numbers. Numbers are great, but people that are mature in Christ are better. We could have a kindergarten in here with all brand new Christians, and it would be a struggle. But when you have mature Christians in amongst all of this, and people that have grown in Christ, it makes everything a lot better, a lot easier. Um, A lot of people then will grow from being around the mature Christians and being around those who've already experienced a lot. When you've lived a long life and you've done a lot and you've had to do a lot, even if you're learning along the way, thank God we do, (laughs) um, to me that's a blessing because the opposite of not learning is you're probably dead. (laughs) That's how I look at it. So um, I just want to say to you guys, look, if you're not in a life group, you are missing a grand opportunity to, number one, grow in Christ, grow in unity, and be a blessing to others. We're blessed to be a blessing to everyone around you. That's what God put you here for. He blessed you so that you could pour out that blessing on someone else. He will continue to pour into you if you're pouring out and blessing others. So please, take the opportunity, grow in the blessing, but get into a life group. Get to know the people around you. Get to know your church. Get to know and love them because this is one of the things I really want you guys to understand. We're better off to do that now than to try and wait till we get to heaven to start trying to figure out who are all these people that are around me. And they come and say, yeah, I was in Bay City Church. And you're like, <laughs> you're going to be looking pretty sheepish. I know I would. If I got there to heaven and all of you guys are there and we're, we're looking around at each other and going, I don't recognize them. Who are they? And they go and say, yeah, I was at Bay City Church. And I was like, oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> How did I miss this person? I don't know. I don't know my people. (laughs) But, you know, the blessing is that we can. And through life groups, it provides a perfect opportunity for you to be be able to do that and not just get to know them, but to grow with them and to be a blessing to one another. Praise God. That's all I have. And I thank you very much. So we just want to get um, our life group leaders up on stage, just so everybody can know who they are. <laughs> Including the young adults? Yeah. Thanks, Pastor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can give me the The A team here. Um, <laughs> we just want to um, get you to just introduce yourself, your name, um, suburb you had your life group in, and what day, um, and just a very brief outline. Brief. 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 <laughs> sorry. I don't do brief. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, my life group um, is a little bit mix of everything. We've got a couple of single moms. We've got Ones are not single mums, <laughs> um, and they're actual families. So you have mothers and three, four children, or three children. So it is a big group. Um, we have it on a Sunday, every second Sunday, uh, at around three o'clock. It allows time for the families to have lunch after church, and then come along. Um, it gets a little bit crowded, but it's actually okay because we have a park around the corner. The teenagers go run off in the park and run a mark while we sit down and chill in the AC and have coffee. So, um, it is because I'm a Rainer Life Group graduate. 
Um, so I know around my own life group, and it's an absolute eye-opener because what they have done for me because I have that relationship with them and that fellowship um, is amazing. And I hope that this relationship and fellowship, rather, that we have in our own life groups extends that outward. So the big thing for life group, extend it outward. It's not just about your little circle in life group. It's about reaching out and bringing more people to the kingdom of God. Oh, sorry, it's in Mortdale. <laughs> Amazing. Hello, I'm Jules, and myself and Josh, who is away today, we run the Young Adults Life Group. So that is 17 all the way to 30. We've got a big age bracket. You're all welcome. If you're a young adult, maybe if you feel young at heart, come along as well, or don't, no. Um, but we run, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. We run every second Sunday, so that will be not today, but next week. After church, we normally get there around 12.31. We're typically at the beautiful Richardson's house. They love to welcome us and open their house to them. We're so grateful for that. And we normally have lunch together, and we just get into the Word and share. And, you know, it's good to get amongst other young believers, and especially, you know, we're all going through, you know, times in our lives where we're stepping into the workforce or going through uni where a lot of the time we're surrounded by a lot of things. Um, and so it's good to just gather with other fellow believers and talk about His Word. And it's been amazing. It's very fresh. I think we've only been doing it a few months. And I'm also part of Anne and Jerry's midweek one. So I can testify that, you know, get part of a life group if you're not part of one. They're amazing. Get into it. Um, but yeah, it's the Young Adults one. I think that's all the details. Yeah. I'm a little bit... Oh, uh, very good. Very good. <laughs> I'm a little bit like... Barbara, <laughs> I've got it all written down. <laughs> I don't want you to miss out. So, together with Sizer and, and I, and Sizer's not here today. She's the other leader in my group, and she's got lots of renovation problems happening, and that's why she's not here. So, with Sizer and I, we gather together with 15 other amazing women at my place at Rockdale, every second Tuesday from 10 a.m. to 12.30. We begin with scrumptious morning tea, <laughs> then separate into two groups for an amazing time of studying God's Word. Two of, the girl, two of our girls actually come online, on the phone with us. So that's a little bit different. Our study is a little different in that we choose a book from the Bible and during the two weeks thoroughly study a few chapters at a time by reading and listening to commentaries on these chapters. Sizer and I then type out discussion notes for our group and when we meet we thoroughly discuss what we've been studying. It's amazing. Someone once told me it's like Bible college. <laughs> At present, we are studying the book of Isaiah. We are overwhelmed with finding incredible gems we've never heard of in these, sen in these commentaries. Even though we know the Bible very well, we're still gobsmacked by what we're learning Another interesting and very important part of our group is, wait for it, we have different denominations coming. For example, Catholics, Greek Orthodox, and other Pentecostals. That may sound a little odd, but our beautiful Catholic Anna was baptised at the beginning of this year. So how good is that? <clears throat> now, because of this, we have a motto that is printed out and displayed to remind us each week, each time we meet. And that is, the Bible truths and beliefs not negotiable. Non-important beliefs give grace. Do them all with gentleness and respect. We also have a WhatsApp group and daily post encouraging messages to one another 
prayer requests, and of course, keeping an eye out for anyone who is in need. And now I'd like to read out what some of the girls wrote about our group. So I sent this message out to the girls because I thought it's our group, not my group, it's our group. And a wholesome fellowship with a wonderful group of women. Enriched by the word of God, our spiritual food. Sharing and questions answered by our study. Empowered, encouraged by the Holy Spirit as we come together. One body in Christ, growing in faith and being led by the doer of the word. Our group is a group of unity, uplifting spiritually and physically. In full, we live and practice how to love Jesus, how to love his word and trust our lives in him as we read, learn, and learn the answers to our prayers. Jesus is our Lord, yes and amen. Our group welcomes newcomers and encourages women to grow in faith in a safe and open place. Hospitable, love, compassion, the word in action, biblically based, free to be who you are, but also challenged to grow. Love God and people. Great leader who cares for all that are in the group. Amen, amen. Thank you. Kieran and I do life group. Read it together so we can have plenty of theological perspective. <laughs> we appreciate Anne's um, PowerPoints and uh, her perspective on things, and we tend to argue that out. <laughs> A lot of iron sharpening iron goes on. Uh, we appreciate uh, eating together. We appreciate being able to share work stories, to be able to work together in some cases, uh, people in the group working together, and uh, to help others. God bless. Okay, um, so I would say that I'm Chris's offsider, so he's, um, he's much more wise than me. And we meet in, uh, like, two suburbs. Um, we meet in Banksia, sort of just up the road at Daniel's place on Tuesday or Wednesday nights. Now, that's the place that um, if you haven't been to the gym, you get the workout by going up the three flights of stairs. <laughs> Guarantee that you'll be puffing by, by the time you get to the top. If um, you don't want to do the gym workout, sometimes we meet at um, Peter and Mom's place at Kyle Bay. Um, that's where you get the nice spread and the nice food and um, just it is like a like a men's life group but we don't discriminate sometimes you know men and other people will uh, sit in with us we don't have a you know there's no dramas about that and yeah so um, like Chris was saying um, we just just getting the, the men together and focusing on the Word of God, I'd like to, you know, just thank Anne and Jerry and Anne, especially for, you know, just the, uh, the, the PowerPoints and, and we, we do have discussions and sometimes we have some KFC, sometimes we have some healthy food, um, homemade, so, and we just have a, you know, just a, a good time of fellowship and, you know, building each other's faith and 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 sort of looking out for everyone in our group and and just trying to help and encourage one another so that's that's our group thanks guys hi everyone um so rob and i we are relatively new i'd say to our our life group um we started i think last year i'm just trying to remember um but it seems like we have a theme going with the life groups um like it was read before in proverbs 27 17 as iron sharpens iron so one person sharpens another and i think um our aim is to grow together um you know when we i think the word 
or the phrase doing life together um, has such a deeper meaning when you involve God, right? Um, and so for us, it's just to gather around the word of God, you know, be be the church um, in a home and, and provide, um, I suppose, the growth that we are all looking for. Um, and just doing that together, we've, we've got people from different walks of life, different ages, and it's beautiful to see how everyone just contributes um, with their life experiences and, and what God is doing and what God's done in their life and, and how Christ has changed their hearts. And, um, and it's, it's good that we also get to pray for one another. You know, we, we go through, like everyone, we go through ups and downs in life, but it's good to be able to have people together learning off each other and, and reading the word. And we do appreciate um, and, you know, um, studies that she sends through every week. Um, you know, I know it's a huge effort. Um, it's, it's a lot of time. And, and we also sometimes just, you know, we will do... I'll ask somebody in the group to share something and, and they'll bring their own study, which is also great because it gives them an opportunity um, to share what God is doing in their life. We are in Bexley North um, and we normally get together on a Tuesday every fortnight. Pam's a talker. So. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, my name is Maddie. I head up our youth ministry, and we have a whole bunch of youth leaders, but I'm not going to get them all up. There's a lot on the front here. Maybe if you're a youth leader, youth volunteer, just give us a hand. There's some in the back. We've got some up in kids um, in different places. But yeah, we meet as a youth ministry on Friday nights, 7.30 to 9.30, year 6, all the way to year 12, and then some outside of year 12, they hang around a little bit, we love them, <laughs> they can keep coming, we can't get rid of them, um, and then within the youth ministry, we have what we call our lifeies, which is like our younger version of, of big churches life groups, um, and so these beautiful leaders, they have a lifey that's based, based on age groups, so you know, our younger students are together, our older students, and they just do life together on Friday nights, but also 24-7. Amen? <laughs> so that's youth ministry. Thank you. Oh, a beautiful life group. Um, the only thing we didn't tell you about was our life group. Me and Anne's life group is over in Menai. Um, we start at 7.30 um, every second Tuesday. And, yeah, we have a mixed bag of tricks. So everybody's, you know, we don't discriminate. We have kids. Bring the kids. We love it all. Thank you. Yeah, um, as a couple of people mentioned, I mean, we've got a, a few different formats for life group. Um, Rini and her group do the intensive sort of Bible study. Um, the rest of us, um, I provide a, it's a cloud-based sort of presentation that we go through. So it can either be done on your phones um, or we put it up on our TV and everyone reads along. So it's, just makes it a little bit more visually engaging. I'm a teacher, art teacher background, so um, we try to make it as sort of interactive as we can. Um, and in saying that, because it can be sent to people on their phones, like Barb's group will sometimes go to the park and they just sit there and they can all read together across their phones. So um, we do make it as easy as we can for everybody to be involved. It's not one person out the front leading, everybody's speaking, everybody's answering questions, everybody's talking, it's very interactive. Um, on that note, um, we'll just pass over to Pastor Andrew. Well done. Give them a hand as they take a seat. And we're going to get our worship team back up. You know, I, um, something that Jerry just said as he was walking, maybe someone grabbed this pulpit. Something um, Jerry said says, when someone is in a church, if they're hurting, others around them should be hurting because Ephesians says we're knitted and fitted. Amen? I love that. You know, if I think that's the whole idea of a church. If you're in a church and uh, you're hurting and no one, no one seems to know you're hurting, then it's time to get knitted, as Ephesians says. It's time to find some community. And obviously... You can come on a Sunday. This is a great opportunity to get community, definitely. But if you want community, community, go to, a, go to a life group. Get yourself there. You know, sometimes I think 
we just miss out on being in an environment where people get to know you and they can pray and then you get that text or that phone call. How did that go? What was the outcome from that? And people following up with you and that comes from relationship. Amen? So why don't we stand to our feet? I'd love you and encourage you this year to, to put life groups on your agenda. Speak to one of our amazing leaders. You can even just email us on the website. Connect on there and we'll connect you with a leader as well. Um, I think that's a powerful way. But church is about community. Don't think you're too busy for community. Amen? One day you're going to get to a space in your life and you might be retired or you might be this or might be that and you've worked yourself to the bone and you'll look around and you'll wonder, where are, where's all my community? Amen? We need to build those around us. Like Anne and Jerry said, people that do life with us along the way. I've got amazing friends. People that do I do life with who check on me and call me and talk to me. People within this church and people with outside of this church. Amen. So make sure you get involved in life groups. Sign up. See one of our great leaders. But I think just before we finish, which will be a little bit early, I think we just, oh, I think we just need to worship it for a bit more. Amen. And I, I love this new song. And so why don't we just for a moment just step into some worship before we get out of here and into the rest of our Sunday. Come on, let's sing Honey in the Rock, amen. Come on, let's go. There's honey in the rock, water in the storm, manna on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know.
God, we thank you. God, we thank you for the realization, the revelation that you are always for us. There is honey in the rock. We thank you that you are on our side. And God, I just pray, Father, that for all of us, we would find connection with each other. That's what your church is built around God, that we're not called to do this life alone. We're called to do it with others on this journey, Father God. And God, I pray for community in Bay City. God, I pray that no one is left alone. No one is left behind. But anyone that is seeking relationship and connection can find it in this house in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, come on, one more time. Everybody said, beautiful. Thank you very much for being part of our Sunday. If you're new or visiting, and if you want to know about life groups, Anne and Jerry can meet you over there under the connection point. We'd love to help you find a place to connect in our church. God bless you. Give Anne and Jerry a hand for this morning. And the creative team. God bless you, church. Hi Church, thanks for joining with us to Church Online today. It was great fellowshipping with you. For all details, go to www.baycitychurch.com. We love you Church.